to 3D scape. Today we're going to be making uh, the rubble scene which you just saw in the intro. If you have any questions regarding this video, please post them in the comments. I'll be sure to reply to them and answer your doubts. If you have any suggestions for me, please do the same. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. So and without further ado, let's get on, let's get on with it. So when I opened a new project with a third person template and this is how it looks. If your edited layout looks different from mine, then just go to the window, load layouts and click UE4 classic layout and you get this with the side panel and stuff like that. So we want to start a new level without any of these things. So we just go to file, new level and I'm just going to create a basic level to create. So you'll see that this is how it looks and it's important that if you want to uh, set dress any environment you need to have the snapping tools off it will just give you much more realism just to remove the snapping tools now for this rubble scene we're going to be needing some assets and for that we need to go to quixel bridge to access quixel bridge just click window quixel bridge and it'll open up so in quixel bridge just these are the assets that i've downloaded you can download any of them but um, this is any rubble type asset but this is the type i chose just go to collections and just click the rubble collections and pick some assets that you like from here okay. so an important plugin before we start important plugin the hdri plugin hdri backdrop just click enable on this and restart the plugin I'll restart the editor so i'm going to start with selecting everything in my scene and hitting delete it's going to turn black now what i'm going to do is I'm going to go to the place actors panel, go to lights and click on HDRI backdrop and drag it into the scene. If you get any weird glitching, just adjust the height of this. That's better. Now, we're gonna start laying out some assets. So take the assets that you have downloaded from Quixel Bridge and just click export on either in, on these side blue arrows, just click on them and it'll, it'll export them to your scene. Now, scroll all the way down to the mega scans folder go to 3d assets and uh, these folders are a bit small so i'm going to hold control use the middle mouse button to enlarge them and uh, this is going to be tedious going inside and selecting all the assets so i'm just going to apply a filter by clicking on this and click static mesh filter and it filters all of them automatically now i'll, I'll start laying out some assets so this is one of them i'm going to first lay out all the assets and then i'm going to start putting them together so this this is so we can get an idea of what we're working with. So I'm going to start with taking this and building a small enclosure type area. So I'm going to have this one here. I'm going to make them, um, you can feel free to scale them and rotate them as you wish. These are your own assets to play with now. This looks good. I'm just going to make a small like barrier on all sides using these assets. Make sure to make the blending proper. See, this is kind of believable blending, but not really. So, I'm going to make it more believable. That looks kind of better, especially when it's closed with more assets. I'm going to scale this down a little bit. And yes, this looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to take this and just drag and drop them into our scene. Hold W to transform it like that. Hold E to rotate it and click R to scale it. Remember that if you scale um, an asset too much, its textures will become stretched and you'll get all, you can see all the geometry, it doesn't look very realistic. So make, try your best to keep it at its original size or smaller. So I want it to look like the rubble is like falling from here, like it's collecting in a heap like that. So this looks good. This should go there probably. Just play with them, see what looks right. These bricks look too large, so I'm going to scale them down a little bit. Again, make sure the asset blending is correct. Can't really notice the seams here, so that's good. I'm going to take this and I'm going to hold Alt and drag to duplicate it. Like that. This looks good. Now I'm going to add this floor type one, floor type asset, which you can just tile multiple times. Nobody will ever really notice the seams because there's so many details like that and um, the bricks see 
see the blending here is not so good so I'm just gonna switch its position to somewhere else and some more assets okay make again look make sure that you don't have any edges sticking out like that that will cause a total breakdown of all realism I'm gonna cover that with another asset and something like this over here will be pretty good and we are done so this is the basic layout now from this angle I'll be able to see the end over there which does not make it very realistic so I'm gonna cover it with some more assets probably something like that I'm gonna make it larger and I'm gonna cover it in the distance slightly farther away so I can't see all the geometry um, and then this one will be good for that side because this side too I should not be able to see much Again, I can see the floor a little bit, so I'll use that floor asset and just scale it up. I won't be there to notice all the details and that area a little bit, so this should cover it up. One more neat little trick is if this looks repetitive, you just go here and in the end you do multiplied by minus one. That scales it completely in the opposite direction. It flips it, so it looks like a completely different asset. It's like you use another asset instead of downloading it. Okay, this looks pretty good. I'm going to add some set dressing, small set dressing assets. This is a little too big, I'm just gonna scale it down to make it look like it fits our scene. And I'm gonna make this slightly tilted because you never see perfectly straight stuff in the real world. This is floating, one second. Yeah, this looks good. And a trash, there, trash uh, bag over here. Uh, this is, okay. This material for the trash bag is a little too matte. I want it to be more glossy. So I'll change that in a second lean on the trash bag a little bit and I just add another trash bag in the corner again hold alt to duplicate alt and drag to duplicate it scale it and rotate it in a slightly different way now I just have to change the material of this a little bit I'm gonna go to the trash bag folder I'm going to go to this material double click it so I open the material editor I'm gonna make this slightly smaller now go to the roughness tick this box and decrease it so it looks slightly more glossy. I'm gonna decrease it even more. Something that's a little too much. Something like that. That looks good. Click save and exit this. Okay, this does not look very believable still, so I'm just gonna hide it in the corner a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna change out the HDRI. Okay, so I have downloaded and imported this from uh, Polyheaven, it's a free um, HDRI, you can download free HDRIs from there and make sure you download it in the .hdr format or it won't really work. Now select the HDRI Sky Dome and where you see this, just uh, drag it and drop it. That looks slightly better, I'm just going to adjust a few things, just make it smaller, slightly and I'm going to turn it, so it casts a more interesting, it gives a more interesting sky. Okay, this looks pretty good. Now you just need to. Uh, I'm just gonna scale this up slightly. So now, <laughs> one second. Yeah. Now we're gonna create a camera and actually animate it. So I'm gonna start with going to cinematics. I'm gonna take this sign cinematic and drag it in. Now to pilot this camera from a first person view, click perspective. Click on the sign cinematic. Pardon me if I pronounce that wrong. Now, you'll see that it's all zoomed in too much. I mean, that's good for cinematic shots, but when you're in tight spaces like this, that's bad. So I'm gonna go to the current focal length and make it something like 25. I'm gonna reduce it. This looks good. And the focus, it's all out of focus. So I'm going to go to focus settings over here. Decrease the focus, uh, manual focus distance. Something like that, this looks good. Can I do that something? Okay, so this is a good place to start. Now we can make a sequence, so I'm just going to click this button over here and click add level sequence. I'm going to save it somewhere, I'm going to call it, yeah, new level sequence. I'm just going to save it here and you get a panel which I'm just going to drag and put it down here. Select the camera and drag it in and you can add keyframes and animate it. I'm going to add a transform keyframe. Keyframe is basically a snapshot in time which the camera refers to. So now if I've added a keyframe over here, wherever I go, whatever I do, if I start, I'll be back here. So it's like a snapshot in time which has been frozen 
and it will be like this forever un unless you delete the keyframe and also i need to add a um, keyframe for the focus distance because i want this to be in focus during this part of the video so this is where it is you can move around keyframes by just dragging and stepping up but one thing i don't want it to be cubic the interpolation should not be cubic so i'm just going to take this and click linear right click and select linear for both and uh, one more way you can do that is just click this button and click make it linear so all the keyframes will be linear linear means that there's always the camera will be moving at a constant speed it won't speed up and slow down okay so i have my keyframe over here make sure you set your frame rate to 24 fps because that's film frame rate and i'm going to go to probably the uh, 48th frame which is two seconds in the video and i'm, I'm going to go somewhere down here you can reduce the camera speed to get more precise movements so go somewhere here and just select this yeah now i'm going to add another keyframe like that so it animates a nice uh, camera movement and the focus distance over here will be something like that and i'm also going to angle the camera a little bit up i think this is this is a better place where it is so i'm just so if you want to update the position just click this again and it's just going to be the new position Let's preview the video okay this looks good now i'm just going to go to 70 second frame or 96th frame that's another 24 frames that's two seconds more of the video i'm going to go somewhere somewhere like that and i'm going to add another keyframe and i'm going to change the focus no i'll keep the focus the same so this is how the video will look okay once we're done with this it's time to render it out if you want it to render where your keyframe stops you just take this and uh, drag it till there that's going to stop rendering at this point and okay, uh, yeah I'm actually going to change this to be over here so this is what it's going to do yeah this is going to be the video now to render this just go to the uh, just click on first of all just go enable the movie render queue plugin over here movie render queue and restart it if it asks restart the editor and now click on the render this movie to a video uh, this one and now you'll find this over here you'll find your level sequence has been loaded up over here click on this unsaved config and delete the jpg uh, bit sequence you can add either exr or png it's going to render out a series of images which you can put together in an editing software to form a video in the output i'm just going to you can keep change the resolution or the output directory or the mm, all sorts of things you can adjust over here so i'm going to do that and to sharpen my video i'm going to add anti-aliasing and i'm going to set this uh, temp, uh, spatial sample count to 32 and i'm going to override anti-aliasing okay i can click save after that and now i can change my output directory if i want to i'll leave it the, the same and i just have to click render local Thank you.